G'day, it's Rob here. Um, it's a bit of a wet day today, so I thought I'd do a, a quick video uh, I'm dealing with um, making a correctly profiled fly cutter tip for cutting homemade gears, spur gears. Now, if you look at my website um, on making um, spur gears on a lathe, um, You'll see a link in the video um, to that. Uh, you can easily um, make spur, simple spur gears like that, plain spur gears. These are two I made. You can make them on a lathe um, without too much trouble at all, um, provided you're um, accurate and do what the, uh, the blog says. You'll be able to finish up the simple gears, which will last just as long as any commercially made gear and be just as accurate if it's done properly. Okay, now here's a, uh, a gear that we want to replicate. Um, when you use this, this, this particular method um, you're actually going to try and reproduce a gear that you've already got. So you'll be using the profile of an existing gear or a gear within say five teeth either side of the gear you want to make um, you'll be using that existing tooth space as the pattern for the cutting tip that you're going to be making up. Now this is uh, just a piece of uh, round high speed steel that you would use for um, um, general you know, machining on a, on a lathe, you grind it to whatever shape you want. In this case you can see how we've ground it to a profile. Now that profile is the exact profile for a 35 tooth gear. You see that fits in and it's a nice snug fit. The profile is the same as the tooth space. As the cut is coming through, uh, cutting its way through, when it's finished it will leave the correct profile tooth space and um, if you do it right your gear will be quiet, smooth running, no problem. Now then, when you look at the profile on this you can see it's, it's double sided. It basically is a mirror image both sides um, of the cutter. In addition you also have backward slant so that gives it clearance so it can clear, uh, clear the cuttings away and also what you can't see well we'll try and show you there is some taper as well so it actually is a coming in in a in a taper from thick part back to thin you can just see it there is a, there's a taper there now, once again, that, that gives you good clearance. Um, if you make the sides parallel, it won't clear as well as having a taper on it. So that's the proper way to make it. Okay. As I said, cutting gears with a single point cutter works well. It's a simple way to do it. It's cheap. All you need is a homemade mount for your, uh, for your tip to go in. So this is just a single point cutting tip. That would go in like that. Lock it in spins around uh, in, a, in, the, uh, in a collet in the, in the spindle or you can even use the chuck if you want to do it that way although a collet is the proper way to do it. Um, simple process and as I said once again look at my, bl my blog on uh, cutting gears on a lathe and you, you, you'll see um, how simple it is. Now single point cutters can be used on a lathe or on a mill so this whole video uh, explanation can be uh, use for either. Okay, the tricky bit is how do you get that profile right? When you first start off cutting gears you're going to have a lot of hassles um, trying to get the right double sided profile. You get one side right and then the other side will be stuffed up. It's, it's tricky and you really need to do it precisely and accurately. So the, when you look at the ways to do it there's a number of ways but the way I do it is uh, a simple way you will have to buy yourself a little set of um, grindstones to do it. Now these are those cheap grindstones that you get in a kit, you know, you get a dozen or ten or a dozen for, I don't know, ten bucks or something. It's not a lot of money. And the ones you want to get out of it are the tapered ones like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the taper of the grindstone to actually uh, grind the facets on the high speed, high speed steel blank but we're going to use the taper uh, to put some back relief on it. So 
while we're spinning that particular stone we'll be grinding onto the blank at 90 degree angle and the taper will not only and the curvature will not only grind the facet but it will also put back relief on the on the cutter as well so basically when you're doing this you will have this mounted in your uh, vertical um, mill slide and you'll bring it in and wind it up to the underside of the uh, of the spinning grindstone take it out, lift it up, come over bring it down onto the top of the spinning grindstone now if you do it correctly if you um, watch uh, how far you're going with this do it evenly you will finish up with a cutter like that so that's a simple process to, to, uh, to cut a, a profile like that um, as I said all you have to do is buy yourself some cheap grindstones like this and um, the actual cutter shape uh, the profile can be varied by moving the blank from one end to the other obviously you'll get a more shallow uh, depression cut into the um, the high speed steel blank up the rear of the tapered uh, grindstone to what you'll get at the front at the front you'll be going in on a smaller radius so that would be uh, good for small sized gears and up the back you're going in on a larger radius which will be better for your larger gears because the teeth have to be more straight so there you go I hope that explanation um, is clear um, and uh, if you use that method um, you'll be able to cut gears um, quite well um, because you have a correctly profiled cutter uh, as I said if you don't have that profile right um, the teeth won't mesh properly and uh, doing it this way it is quite easy um, and you shouldn't have too much trouble so good luck with your gear cutting see you next time